of in Burke County. He used his own dime. He wasn't part of a, it wasn't his job or his position, but he used his own dime to go not only to that county, but advocate for them all the way up at the White House. He has always been a resilient leader. It has been difficult at times when he first ran his first statewide campaign um, as a young family and he would have to travel throughout the state of Georgia. And our Saturdays became picnics in different counties like Paul or going up to Raven County and things like that. But that was the beginning of his journey. He's always been resilient in fighting for justice. So that is why I think that he will be a great candidate for you and he will serve the Democratic Party well. And with that, I would like to officially nominate my husband, Daniel Gladman, for the next chair of the Democratic Party of Georgia. to our elected officials, uh, to Nikema, and to every other candidate that's crazy enough to take on this journey to want to lead the state party. I want to welcome you. And I also want to say that while I'm thankful the shutdown is over and I'm extremely proud of Speaker Pelosi, we should thank the workers. We should thank yes. the workers. Yes. in many cases are not represented around the state. And today I'm here to tell a story briefly, five minutes is a short time to pack a lot into, but I'll do my best at it. I really wanted today to be about knowing that while there's a tremendous amount of excitement, there's also a little bit of pain. And that's because we have grown as a state and we have done a tremendous job in growing and making strides. And I thank Stacy and I thank Sarah Miko and I thank Lucy and all these phenomenal people we have but up in Raven County, Georgia, there was not one Democrat on the ticket. 79 counties out of 159 since the 2008 recession are still in a recession. They're still hurting. They haven't fully recovered. And for me, running for chair, one, wasn't something that was really on my radar. But when I started listening to a lot of the people that my wife mentioned earlier, I started to realize the importance of creating a strategic plan that was for the entirety of our state and not just beneficial to a few really good counties. And I'm not saying that to find fault, I'm saying that to take responsibility because I'm the son, as my wife mentioned, of a United States Army Ranger, and he understood fundamentally before he passed away that if you didn't have a strategic plan, if you didn't know how to get to where you're going, the folks that went to where they were going on a mission didn't return home. So for me, and to all of our veterans, I want to thank you for your service. To me, the next four years isn't about 2020. And if anyone wants to visit Georgia, they need to understand to make sure that Atlanta, and we love Atlanta, isn't our only stop because we have a big state that has done a tremendous amount of work. I thank my colleagues and other folks in Cobb and in Newton County and in Douglas and all over this state, even in Paulding County, just had a conversation with a lady that's helped to get seven Democrats to run. But for me, I understand fundamentally a few things, and I have a, a, a strategic plan that was released. If you haven't seen it, one, I'm not going anywhere regardless of the outcome today, so we'll still be involved, we'll still work hard, we'll still fight for Democrats all over the state. But I, I came up with this concept that many of us share in this room on building a bench, but I want you all to understand, building a bench is much more than just getting good candidates to run for office. It's about taking homegrown talent right here in Georgia to run our campaigns, to be our strategic coastal Georgia, in, in mountainous Georgia, in south Georgia. It's more than just bringing in people from Washington and D.C. to run our campaigns when we have talented people right here that know how to do the work and that stand up. Now, as my wife mentioned earlier, it was a hard decision for me to move to Forsyth County. Matter of fact, one of the first people I spoke to was Hank Johnson and John Lewis, and I asked him before I went up there, and one thing that Hank Johnson said to me that always stuck with me is he said, Daniel, sometimes you got to go places where it's uncomfortable. Yeah where they might not know a black family, while they might not be comfortable being around a Democrat. Yes. And so I got involved and I got committed and I became the first black person to ever run for office in Forsyth County, Georgia. And then when I ran, we ran against Michael Williams, who was probably not only one of the worst candidates in the history of the state of Georgia, but was an embarrassment for our state. And became the first Democrat to run there in 27 years. 
But in doing that, I understood that Georgia was more than just Metro Atlanta and Forsyth County because I started to go further north. And the further north I went, the more I saw blue dots and red oceans. Yes. The more I saw people that were forgotten about because they were in areas that just weren't winnable. And in order for us to be able to build the kind of county we're proud, the kind of party we're proud of, we're going to have to take a real close look inside and take the things that we have done very well and build upon them and the things that we can fix. We've got to all come together and be willing, not just in our own wheelhouse. I was speaking to Chairman Barrett from Newton County, and he was talking about how he wants to go out to Rockdale and the cab and other areas. What does the yellow mean? 30 seconds? There we go. I'll lock it up. <laughs> But here's where I'll close. It's very critical and important. Man, five minutes went by fast. It's very critical <laughs> and important for us to understand that we live in a big state. And look around you right now as I close, and this is our team. It doesn't start in 2020, it starts right now. And it doesn't end in 2020, it goes into 2021. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Daniel Blackman. I wish I had more time, but I want to be respectful and I want to get invited back at some point and I want to make sure that we have a chance to hear from the Kima. Thank you so much and God bless you.